But today is kind of, I guess you could call it a standalone message. I want to share uh, my heart and the leadership's heart here at Lakeview uh, about the year that we have before us. And we have many new people that have, even during the summer we've grown. I know it's a holiday weekend and we're so glad we've got many of our leadership that are away and traveling and uh, to see all of y'all here today is such a blessing. Thank you for being with us. And I'm excited to share with you some things I believe God has laid out for us that he's prepared the way for us in this next year. Today is just going to be kind of a description of the vision that we have for the ministry here. And my hope is that you will feel just led to just jump right in and, and uh, find a place to be involved and be part of the family. Uh, even if today's your first time, you're a guest uh, this morning, we've got connection cards in the seats in front of you. I'd love to get to connect with you and, and speak to you personally after this service. Uh, you can fill that out and we'll, we'll gather them up at the end of service when we do our uh, tithe and offerings. But this morning's message, I simply titled it, uh, My Prayer for You, because uh, that's what it is. It's based on a passage of scripture found in Ephesians chapter one. It's really what uh, this model that we're uh, building, the foundation that we're trying to build upon here at the church is based upon. And there are only a few places in scripture where there are actually examples of prayers. You know, many are familiar with the Lord's Prayer but there's not a whole lot of instances. It talks about prayer a lot and says we need to pray. Uh, but some people uh, may wonder, like, I don't know if I have the right words. I love when the scriptures actually give us examples of, you know, someone praying. Like you may have heard of the prayer of Jabez or the, and, and, you know, other things like that. But this is a great prayer. And it's actually where we base our process, our discipleship process, our ministry goals, our vision. And so I wanted to share it with you because I've, I've never fully articulated this to the church. You may have seen banners, you may have seen logos, you hear it in our messages, we'll say things like, you know, know God, find freedom, these sorts of things. I want you to see what that's based upon, what we're building upon. And there's many churches across the nation that have this unified goal of, above all else, more than promoting ourselves, we just want to promote Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so this is how we plan to do it. We don't want to just tell you we've got a plan. We want to show you the plan, let you see behind the, the curtain a little bit today. Ephesians chapter 1, if you've got your message notes and want to follow along with me there or follow along in your Bibles, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. First he says, so that he may know you better. Then he says, I also pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And I want to read this in the message version as well, just because I love how it's worded here. It says, I ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do, grasp the immensity of his glorious way of life he has for you. Could I ask you please to pray for me and pray with me as we get ready to uh, hear from the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, I praise you for your presence that we already feel and experience. And God, I thank you that your word is provided for us as instruction and empowerment. And I just pray you bless your word right now. Anoint this time in the name of Jesus, I ask it. And all in agreement said, amen. amen. So again, this is going to be kind of my prayer for you. And in honesty, most mornings, uh, some of you may have utilized our prayer guides that we provide. And it'll have example prayers from scriptures. Uh, there's you know, nothing saying that that's the only way that you have to pray. But sometimes it's a great thing to have a guide scripturally to pray scriptures. How many of you know God always keeps his promises? So when you've got a promise in Scripture and you pray that over your life, over your family, over your situation, you can take that to the bank because if it's Scripture, that's the direct Word of God. And we want to speak God's Word over our life. This prayer, I pray this over our church all the time. This is my hope. This is my desire for everyone that encounters somebody who's a follower of Christ as part of Lakeview Church. You know, whether it's here in a church service, in the community, in your families, this is my prayer. And, and I want you to see the four parts of our ministry that we really focus on are found in the scripture. He says, I keep asking, you know, God to, to give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, 
It says, so that you may know him better or know him personally, it says in the message version. And that's that first step that we talk about, knowing God. That'll be your first blank if you want to fill that in. We, first of all, want you to know God. We want you to know him personally. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. That should be one of the most sobering, uh, concerning scriptures. You know, I don't, I don't want you to be scared of God, but the Bible says the fear of the Lord, the respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So he's saying he wants us to have the spirit of wisdom. Your first part of, of growing to be wise is realizing how truly powerful God really is. Amen? And I'm really glad he's on my side. Can somebody say amen to that? But if you don't know the Lord personally, if all you do is hear about him from someone talking, you know, on a Sunday or, or in a small group, or you, you just know him because your parents or grandparents told you about him and you attended, you know, church for a while, it's not the same. Because someday you will stand before God by yourself. That's what the Bible says. We all will give account. The beautiful thing is you don't really have to be alone. Hopefully you have the blood of Jesus Christ covering you. He is your advocate there to defend you and to, and to speak. Because how many of us have made mistakes in this old life? How many of us have made mistakes this morning and sinned against God? Hallelujah in traffic. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hit any traffic on my way down from the house today, but sometimes those geese are crossing the parking lot and it just stirs me up. But seriously, y'all, we need God. And if you really need somebody, you want to know them enough that you can trust when you call upon them, you, you've got instant access to them, that they're going to, to, to be there for you. We know God never leaves us, never forsakes us. That's what the Bible says, but we can mess up that relationship on our end. We can walk away from him, turn our back on him. And it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, some really helpful instruction. How do we know him? It says, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. Again, I don't obey God's commands. We talked about this morning in our small group time, in our Fresh Start group. We don't obey God to try to earn our salvation we do it to show our salvation, to show that he loves me and I love him and I, I'm going to be obedient to him. How do you know God? You'll, you'll know him if you obey his commands. If, if you really don't want to, you really have difficulty with it, you probably need to get to know him better. You know, you spend time. I don't like people just bossing me around. The other day, some guy told me just to move. I was in Walmart, minding my own business. He just said one word. He said, Move. You know what was the last thing I wanted to do in that moment? <laughs> was move. I was like a tree planted by the rivers of water. <laughs> but then I looked up and noticed he was a respectably sized gentleman. And being the good minister and follower of Jesus I am, I graciously allowed him to go wherever he wanted to go. Because <laughs> I came up to about his shoulder uh, I respected that guy because I saw the power he had. <laughs> and so it should be with our Heavenly Father. I know God loves me, but I don't want to manipulate that relationship, take it for granted or, or take advantage of his love. Amen. Amen? I know him, and how do I know if we obey his commands? And it's a process, but you've got to start somewhere. You need a first step, and isn't God so kind that even gives us an action step for everything that we're going to share. This is really our spiritual vision for our church. We want everybody to know God. And that first action step that we want people to take is when they've given their heart to God to be water baptized. And I don't ever want this to just seem like some ritualistic thing. Y'all, so many things that are powerful and precious in scripture become too commonplace to us. And being water baptized is just what we talked about is obeying a command that was given to us by God and through Scripture. Acts 2.41 says, Those who accepted his message were baptized. 
And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. It's an important thing to be baptized because Jesus said to be baptized and because Jesus was baptized. You want to be a follower of Jesus? Start off doing what he does. Can I tell you, it may feel small or it might even feel a little silly. Like, why am I letting this dude dunk me underwater? Can I tell you, sometimes we have to do little things that get us a little bit uncomfortable. I think to start preparing us for the great things that God is going to have us do next. We just take it one step at a time. And this is a great action step, a great first step into our relationship with God is being water baptized. If you've given your life to the Lord or you're making a new commitment to the Lord and you say, like, really, this is it. I'm really dedicating my life. I encourage you to be baptized. Every third Sunday, we offer water baptism here at the church. It's part of the game plan we have. But y'all, you noticed last last month we had to do it several other Sundays because people's work schedules. Y'all, God ain't worried about if it's the third Sunday, if it's in the creek or in the bathtub we got back here, whatever. He just wants you to be obedient to his commands. If your heart's in the right place, again, baptism doesn't save you. You don't have to do it to earn salvation, but it shows your salvation. Amen. It's an important thing. And I would love, if if you would desire to be water baptized, September 15th, just two weeks from today, we've already got one scheduled. If you need to plan it out from there, you can do that. You can even, y'all, we've made it so easy for you. You can sign up online. We'll provide you everything you need, your towel, your change of clothes, whatever you need. We got it for you. We got it covered. We have a team of people that get you covered. And I want to see people, it excites me that every month we've had people get saved and be water baptized. It's just an incredible thing. And I believe God is blessing that because we're just trying to be obedient to him. Now, the second thing we talk about, you'll hear us say it a lot around here. We got it on banners out in the hallway and on your worship guides, is we want you to find freedom for everybody. This is our game plan, y'all. It's not just a slogan. It's a plan. We want people to know God for themselves personally. And then, once you know God, that second part of Ephesians 1.16 where it says, the glorious Father, he, so that you may know him better. It then says, I pray that the eyes of your what? Heart may be enlightened. You know, our heart has eyes. You, you can see things. You know how you can sometimes tell something about a person, even though you haven't seen them in, in that situation or behave that way, you know it about them because your heart can sense it. Do you ever just sense people that you can trust? And you open up to them more quickly. And then there's other people that you are very cautious with. Because again, your spirit, your heart, you just, you can sense that. It, the, the Bible says this prayer was that the eyes of our heart may be enlightened so that we can know the hope to which he has called you. We need our hearts open. We need the, the our glasses, as you may know. And it's awful if you wear glasses or have a contact lens. I, I wear contacts all the time until I move to the driest climate in the history of the state of Texas uh, here in Wichita County. I love it here, so I, I was wanting to stay, so I switched to glasses because my contact lens just wouldn't do it. But it used to be horrifying to lose a contact lens. Anybody ever done that while driving? Isn't that the best feeling? And that you'll know God real quick if you don't, if you lose a contact lens while you're driving. Uh, or else my glasses will get fogged up, and it can just drive me crazy if I've got a little smudge. My kids... Benjamin, my little one-year-old, he loves you know, to grab onto my beard. That's why I'm slowly just shaving it. This is, I haven't actually shaved. This is just patches he's ripped out. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Some of y'all's faces. Uh, but he'll, he'll be playing you know, with my beard or mustache or whatever, but then he'll grab my glasses. That's his favorite thing to do, see if he can break them. It's a little game we play. How fast can I stop him from breaking my glasses? And a lot of times his little handprints, and you know, I love his handprints, but I don't love them on my glasses, and I can't see, and it drives me nuts, and I have to find something to wipe it off because I, I want to know what's going on. I want to see where I'm going. In finding freedom, when you get saved, you are immediately as saved as you ever need to be. But you're not as free as you need to be. You still got stuff to figure out. The Bible says you're a new creature. You're like a baby in the Lord. So there's stuff you got to figure out. You had to learn, as a child, you had to learn how to crawl and then walk and how to feed yourself, not just be fed by someone else, not just be fed by the pastor ministering to you. How do you know God in your personal life? How does scripture, there's this big old book, how do you understand it? You, you need freedom to be able to overcome all your hangups, all your uh, past faults and guilt and shame so that you can focus on growing and focus on those things that God wants you to do. As it says, to, to finding out, you know, what he's called you to do. Finding freedom is such an important step. It says in Proverbs 3, 4, 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. 
your heart is kind of a battlefield. And the enemy will try to, even though you've given your life to God, he'll try to attack you in places in your heart, in your spirit. And you're saying, you may be baptized, you may be on fire for God, you've been started really committing to God, but then, and some of y'all that have been following the Lord a long time can testify to this. Isn't it the truth that so many times the harder you're trying to, to follow God, it seems like the harder the devil starts fighting you? And as much stuff as you have, if, you, if you've got old hang-ups, old situations that you haven't resolved, old addictions and habits that you need to overcome, it makes it more difficult to follow the Lord because you keep getting caught on stuff. We want you to have freedom from those things because the issues of life, that's, that's where you know, your heart really matters. James 5.16 says it this way. It says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Again, a lot of people never find freedom because we're too afraid to ask for help or we're too afraid to admit to other people that we're struggling. The old standby of coming to church is just, how's it going? Fine. Fine. Please don't ask anything else. You know, that's what that means. How many of y'all have done that? Just being real. It's like I smile at people, I wave at people, and on the inside, I'm dying. I'm struggling. I've done that. Can I tell you, I have stood up here and tried to put on a good face for you people on the inside. I, I'm, I'm shaken. And those things the devil wants to, they, they'll come up from time to time. And, and yet sometimes they just hit you in a wave or they, they spring back up. God wants us to be free from, from guilt, from grief, from shame, from pain. Things that the enemy has done to us that God hasn't done to us. Doesn't mean that you're not going to go through those things. But God doesn't want you to be bound by those things. And the way it says that we get healed from, from this is to confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. See, the next action step that we promote around here, part of our vision for you, is that you would get in a small group. It could be called anything. We have lots of small groups. One of our great small groups for overcoming you know, hang-ups in your life, hardships, is called Celebrate Recovery. It meets on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. And you will not find a more caring group of people that's not trying to put you down, but trying to lift you up. Amen? And it can be any kind of problem. Some people think it's just drug, alcohol addiction. It's so much more than that. It, we've got people that are there, they've gone through divorce and they're, they're grieving that, that relationship. They've got people that have lost you know, family members, loved ones that are they're going through that, walking through that process. Or they're just struggling with stress and, and, and pain in their, in their personal life, whatever it might be. We need people. Because, y'all, it's hard to go through this life alone. And why we promote small groups so much is that you can kind of hide in a, in a large group. And I know we're not a mega church or anything, but we're getting enough people now that I guarantee you there's people over here that you don't really know people over there. You might know their names, but maybe that's all you know about them. And if we're not careful in the anonymity in that, we won't feel like there's anybody we can trust. We won't feel like there's anybody... You know, and last Sunday we talked about the last part of the message, that quote from Cheers, you know, from the song where everybody knows your name. And all of y'all, most all of y'all, some of you are sanctified and didn't know what that TV show was, but most everybody, as soon as I started saying it, you, you not only finished that one line, some of y'all kept singing the song. You knew the whole theme song. And that's okay, I mean, but y'all, there's a reason why people are attracted to the bar scene. And that a lot of people don't like to drink alone. They want people to hang out with them. They just want people to share. And you know what happens when you drink? Is it, they say it gets rid of your inhibitions and you'll talk more openly. You don't feel as shy to share things. Imagine if as Christians we did that without the booze flowing. And it was the spirit that was directing our conversations instead of spirits. Amen, somebody. Because <laughs> can I tell you, when the spirits are controlling you, you'll say stuff you'll regret. Not saying I've ever done that, but you know what I'm talking about. But when the Spirit's guiding you and you have someone that you can actually trust, the Bible says healing can take place. Because can I tell you, just from the, the get-go, it's healing to have somebody know your, your worries, your fears, your shame, and for them not to look at you any differently. That's a powerful thing. Just for them to say, I love you anyway, and to say, hey, what's, what do we do now? How do we help make this better? 
That's how that healing can begin. And a lot of times we never let those wounds even be revealed to other people. Small groups is a powerful place for this to happen. We have some going on right now. Uh, Fresh Start, and and those are on Sunday mornings at 10. Our grow groups are always Sundays at 10. We're right now meeting together, the adults are, but we have them for all ages where you can get involved in a small group. So there's time, there's, there's the right amount of people. We just like them to be, you know, 10 or so or even less so that there's conversation that happens because real life change happens in re- real relationships. You can fake stuff just meeting people for five minutes a week. You can pretend like everything's okay, but when someone gets to know you, then you can really share. You can do what the Bible says and bear one another's burdens. And we even have a great new group on, meeting on Sunday nights uh, at five, just for these next few weeks, I'd still encourage you. Uh, last week was our first week, but you need to get involved tonight because it's, it's a powerful program. It's called Freedom. We'll meet tonight at five, and it's just right here in the sanctuary. It's a small group, uh, but it's, it's a powerful thing. If you've been struggling with overcoming things or you just want to get to know God more, this is for you. I'd love for you to be here, but we offer them all the time. You can see them on our website. Uh, we promote them uh, constantly, and it's important. To, those aren't just classes, y'all. They're relationships that are waiting on you uh, to form them. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And we talked about this last week, that scripture where it says, uh, don't give up meeting together. It wasn't really talking about their tabernacle gathering like we have on Sunday morning where we all gather together. This is great to come to, but if this is all you come to and you don't know anybody personally, you're just not getting the full benefit of being a part of the family of God, the body of Christ. And that first part, imagine if people did this, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. What if we did that instead of thought of ways to put each other down? Or thought of ways to think that I'm better than you. You know, it's a powerful thing. When you care about people, you don't want to put them down. You want what's good for them. And that's what these small groups can do. The third step, once you've started to find freedom in your life, you know God and you're overcoming things, then and only then, I believe this next step can happen where you discover purpose in your life. A lot of people feel aimless in life. Can I tell you that's because you probably don't really know God. And he's the one that created you, so he's the only one that can really tell you what you were created for. And he has to tell you, I can't do it for you. But also, you may need still to find freedom. You still may be struggling with so many distractions, they're like smudges on your glasses. You can't see clearly because you've got all this stuff from your past that you still need to overcome and and get through so that you can really see and discover. As it said there in, in Ephesians, it said that way you may know the hope to which he has called you. And I tell you, you will feel hopeless and helpless if you don't know your purpose in life. And I believe it's why we are the most wealthy nation in the world, but also the most medicated. Because we got all this blessing, but a whole lot of people don't know what to do with their life. Because slowly and surely, we're turning away from the Lord. I was awakened last night, and I don't say things like this a a, a lot, because I don't like to sound strange or, or creepy. But if God has ever woken me up, he did last night, about three in the morning. And I didn't think I was that concerned with, you know, the things going on. I wasn't like afraid of news reports and things I'd read. But I told y'all earlier, I'd I'd read, read about the shootings and things. It just was on my heart, on my mind. And if I've ever heard the Holy Spirit speak to me, it was like I could almost hear his voice. He was speaking to my heart. He began to say, this is the, the result of people turning their backs on on God. This is what happens. If we trust that we can protect ourselves, if we think we can figure this out all on our own, this is what happens. It's destruction. And we're seeing people turn on each other, people fighting against each other over foolish things. You know, they'll kill each uh, uh, each other over political differences. What are we doing? We've lost our way. And you'll feel that kind of stress, that kind of turmoil in your life if you don't really know what it is God has called you to do. You'll just feel aimless. You'll feel exhausted all the time. You won't feel motivated. How many of us want to go to work doing a job that just feels meaningless? You know, and sometimes that's how people's everyday feels. They're just going through the motions. Discovering your purpose is a powerful next step. Romans 12, 6 says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. Do you know the grace that God gave you wasn't just for your salvation, but for your purpose? He gives you grace gifts. 1 Peter 4, 10 
It says, God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. And so many people struggle because they just see other people. And they're like, well, I can't sing like that person or preach like them. or I'm, I'm not you know, as parental as they are, not as good of a motivator and encourager. They, y'all, don't worry about other people's gifts. They're already doing their thing. We need you to realize that you've got a unique, specific purpose. And can I tell you, we've, we've put something in place to help you with this, uh, the action step here that we want you to do to, to discover your purpose is attend what we call growth track. And again, it's not just a class. It's, it's so much more than that. You'll actually, uh, it's a four-week course. We do it every, uh, every month. It starts first through fourth Sunday. It's always right after church. So good news. If you want to take growth track, you could do it today right after church. You don't even have to pre-register. We, we want you to pre-register because we do a little lunch and stuff. We got plenty of stuff for you. And some have already registered for today, and it's going to be held back in the fellowship hall. Pastor Mark will be heading it up today. And you can take step one of growth track, which kind of shares with you, you know, more of the vision, the inner workings of the church, and lets you decide, is this something I want to be a part of, and where can I get involved? Uh, step two, week two of it, you actually take like a gift, spiritual gifts test. And it's no joke. It's very in-depth. It's, it's very enlightening. I over and over have people take that, and they're just like, I never would have thought this about myself, but I see it now. It just asks you questions, and when you, when you score that up, it shows some areas that you might feel called toward. And it's amazing to watch people who felt like, I don't have any place to serve. I don't have any role to play in the body of Christ, to watch their eyes be open, their heart be changed. And if, if you hadn't gone through growth track in a while, you have seasons in your life where your giftings change. You may need to do it again and, and find out where, where is God leading me? Where, does he, where has he been equipping me for? And, and through this, in the fourth step of it, we just, Pastor Mark and I meet with you personally and we get you involved somewhere that you want to be involved. We're not trying to plug people into somewhere they're going to feel like, I got to serve in this place and I'm going to be miserable till Jesus comes. We want you involved where you're equipped, where you feel gifted. And it's such a powerful thing to walk through this. Again, over this next year, I want to see everybody go through growth track. And as new people come, can you see how this works? Where we don't want them just sitting on the pews. We want them involved in ministry, being involved in, in all that God is doing here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. That means you need to know what your purpose is. What is your gift, giftedness that God has called you to? This all leads up to the final part of our vision, part of our game plan. Again, not just a slogan, but it's steps that we're taking is we want you to make a difference with your life. And personalize this. This is our vision for you. Y'all, we've got some awesome plans uh, to revitalize and refurbish our property. Uh, we need to redo our parking lot because apparently it was originally made out of peanut brittle in some places. I know some of y'all have seen the rebarb waving at you as you come to church. It's our new greeter system. We just have metal bars wave at you at church. But I'm praying God puts it on people's heart to help support that. We're going to share those vision with you to, to fund these projects and do these things because we want to take care of what God has blessed us with. Amen? But can I tell you what's more important to God is people. He cares about people way more than property. And can I tell you, I believe if we'll take care of people, the ones that God has entrusted us with, he'll help us take care of the property he's blessed us with. Can somebody say amen to that? So this is our focus. You're going to hear about other things, practical things that we do, but this is our spiritual vision is we want everybody to know God, find freedom in their life, and discover their purpose so that they are making a difference. And really, if you cannot like tangibly, like literally identify somewhere in your life that you feel like my life matters, you're probably not to this step yet, and that's okay. We're all at different parts of the spectrum. But notice it's not a huge leap. It's not, anybody remember the show Quantum Leap? I'm just wondering which of y'all are cool in here. Okay, it, you all may go to heaven first that know that show. It, this is not some quantum leap here, y'all. It's just one step at a time. Anyone can do this. In fact, everyone's called to do this. You may feel like I could never do that. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a worship leader. I'm not whatever. No, you're exactly who God called you to be and he wants you to serve exactly where he calls you to serve. We have a lot of areas here in the church that I'd love for you to get involved in. You can find out about them through Growth, growth Track. And the, the Bible says in John 15, 8 and 11, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I have told you this, look at this, so that my joy may be in you 
and that your joy may be complete. You will not feel fulfilled in your life until your life actually counts for something, until you're making a difference. Again, I believe it's why we're such a blessed nation, but such a depressed nation. It's because people's lives, are not, we're very selfish, very self-centered if we're not careful. And you won't find joy. That's what the scripture says. I've told you so that my joy may be in you and your joy. This is for our blessing. Did you know serving God? How many of y'all know he's got legions of angels that could serve him if he wanted them to? It's not for his benefit, it's for ours. He blesses us to bless us so that we can be a blessing to other people. It's, it's a powerful concept if you get it. The, the thing that we have in place, the action step here, this is brand new in some ways. We've done some of this in the past, but it's revamped. It's so powerful. I'm excited about it. Is what we call our dream team. And the dream team uh, is, is a gathering of, of our team leaders, our team members. We're going to meet on Sundays. You can find out about it on our website, lakeviewpeople.com slash dream team. And once you've gone through growth track, we want all dream team members to have gone through growth track to get... You know, so that you know what we're doing and you're, we're all on the same page. We're all on the same team here. But then this is our people that, y'all, they make the ministry happen. Did you know this church relies on a lot more than just me? It does. And we couldn't do this without all of us working together. And yeah, I'm real proud of the stuff we're doing. Y'all, we're doing a good job. And, and if you're new and you say, I'm not really involved anywhere, we've been trucking along without you. But you know what? We'd be a lot better off with you, with your help, with you being involved. And God will help us, he'll stretch us, he'll do all that. But can I tell you, the body of Christ is most fulfilled when the entire body of Christ is working together. We don't want to be an amputated body of Christ. We need everybody working together. And again, if you're feeling like in your life, I'm not really doing anything with my life, here's an opportunity to get involved in, in something that will make a difference. We have all sorts of ministry opportunities. There are outreach ministries. There are prayer, prayer team ministries. There are working with students and kids. There, there are, are, are involvement in worship, involvement in, you know, if you've got a, a heart for, you know, graphic design and multimedia. There's all sorts of things. And new teams are happening all the time. And we want you to be a part of this so that we can complete what God has called us to. See, 1 Corinthians twelve twenty seven says... All of you together are Christ's body. Think about that for a second. And each of you is a part of it. We need everybody. And if somebody could come to the to music before we read this final part. Again, I just want to share my heart with you this morning. Is, is that I'm afraid there's people in our midst that you haven't felt like your life really counts for anything. Like you don't matter. I tell you, that's a lie. That's not how God sees you. And as a part of the body of Christ, we want you, we need you uh, to be involved. You're, you're important to the ministry of the Lord. That's why we put these just next steps. It's easy, you know, we're not trying to make it a, a, a race where you don't even know how you get in and get involved. We just, we've got simple next steps you can take to get involved and it'll, it'll get you started on that journey, that relationship with God that, that you want. And Wherever you're at today, I hope you see that once you start making a difference, I'm coming back to water baptism again. and I wanted to talk about that in closing for a reason. I want everybody to be water baptized. But did you know as a follower of Jesus, we were also commanded to see other people get baptized, see other people get saved. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And whatever you're doing in life, what, whatever role you fill in ministry, and, and you can do ministry not just at the church. It, you need to be ministering in your homes to your family. That's your first calling. But wherever you're at, the ultimate goal is once you know God, and you've found freedom, and, and you've discovered your purpose in life, and now you're making a difference, you know what your goal is? Help somebody else know God. So that they can find freedom. When you've gotten through a struggle, a hang up, show them how God helped you and, and that'll help them. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and what? The word of our testimony. Other people say, man, they did it, I can do it. You know, God's healed you in your life. You're going to be a testimony to somebody else who's going through that same hurt, that same problem. And in so doing, y'all, there's nothing like getting to watch somebody that you've witnessed to that you've reached out to, that you've ministered to, 
and see them giving their heart to the Lord, them being baptized. The, the cycle just continues. And in so doing, we're going to fill up heaven and empty out the gates of hell. I believe that. The final scripture here says, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. See, water baptism, here's your final blanks. It's a public declaration of a new association. You're saying, I'm joining the team. You know, and that's the first step. And we hope you get all the way to the dream team. You know, whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. You're part of the body of Christ. It's, a, it's an awesome thing. And I dare say there's people under the sound of my voice that if I declared to you, if I had a word from the Lord or a word from a sportscaster that a certain running back who wears a star on his helmet had finally signed up for the team that he's already being paid to play for, it's Ezekiel Elliott, if you don't know who I'm talking about. Just praying the Holy Spirit gets a hold of that boy before the regular season starts. But if he got signed up, you know what? I'd be happy because I'm a Cowboys fan and I want them to win and not lose. But can I tell you something that's sad? Part of being a Cowboys fan is sometimes I became a fan in the 90s, what we call the glory years. You know, and when I became a Cowboys, seriously, I was just about the age that I started to understand football. That was when we won Super Bowls. I thought you just went to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl every year. I thought that's what it meant to be a Cowboys fan. How many of you know that's not the journey anymore? No. I rebuke the spirit of patriots that just declared that. But all jokes aside, think with me about this. I thought that's what happened. You just win, you just win. Sometimes our relationship with God is like being the Cowboys fan. You, you get started and you're so pumped up, you're so excited, you think everything's just butterflies and sunshine. But then you go through a difficulty and you think, well, I guess the next time I have a victory is when I get to heaven. That's not how this is supposed to be. If you just focus on your victory, the biggest moment in your life is when you got saved, y'all. It don't get no better than that. When you, you're totally as saved as you ever need to be. God's given you as much as you need, as much faith, as much power. You've got access to all of it. You just got to figure it out and start walking in it. So what's your role now? Now you need to share that with other people. It's called good news. And we want everybody to know it. And I tell you, you won't be fulfilled. Your life really won't make a difference for other people until you get to that point where you've started sharing the gospel, the good news. You've started preaching the word in your life with, with the life you live. You're an example for Jesus everywhere you go. And you know what? The church will be so much more effective if we don't leave it up just to a couple of guys talking on a Sunday morning for 30 minutes. But the body of Christ, everywhere we go, we're an example for God. I want to ask you to bow your heads and bow your hearts with me. There's two, two people groups that I want to, to issue a challenge. First of all, if you're in this place and you really don't know the Lord and you're like, man, I, I want to jump on the bandwagon. I, I want to get involved. The Holy Spirit, that, that's the Holy Spirit drawing you. You feel excitement. Your life has been meaningless and you're, you're just like, I, I want meaningful things. I, I want a re real relationship with God. And you want to make that commitment to the Lord. Can I tell you, it's the greatest adventure you'll ever go on if you'll really seek Him with your whole heart. And you can take those next steps. You'll start finding freedom in your life. You'll start really discovering what God has created you for. And you can live a life that makes a difference. If you want to take that first step today to know God, would you just raise your hand where you're at? I'd like to pray with you and pray for you. Yeah, anybody else? Praise God. You can put your hands right back down. Anybody else? Just real quickly. Amen. Well, I want to pray with y'all. But to, to everyone else in here, if there is someone who comes to your mind that they are important to you but they don't know God and that just being honest if they stood before him in eternity I want you to understand your salvation cannot count for them their parents their church whatever they have to know the Lord for themselves and you want them to know God you, you want to, the Lord to use you hopefully to make a difference in their life if you've got somebody like that, on, that, I mean, it may be several people. They come to your mind. They come to your heart. You care about them so deeply and you want to see them saved. If you've got somebody like that, would you slip your hand up real quickly? I want to agree with you for the Lord to reach out. Lots of us. Yeah, amen. We've got family members. We've got friends who are unsaved. You can put your hands down. I'm just going to pray with you and pray for you. and We'll open the altars later. If you've got a need, we've got a prayer team we got ministry that we'll pray for whatever you have need of but this is 
in this moment, this is what God has led me to do. I want to pray with those who are giving their hearts to the Lord that you want to know God. Then the rest of us, y'all, I want you to understand part of our role in ministry is helping other people's family and friends know God. And you know what? I've got some family and friends who probably aren't trying to hear about the truth from me. Because maybe I've, you know, they know me. They, they, they're, they're like, I don't even understand it coming from you. And, but somebody else, it'll make sense to them. Can I tell you, I don't care how they receive it. I just want them to receive salvation. And us ministering, when we do it for the Lord, it's a powerful thing. It's a blessing to the body of Christ. Because you might witness to my family member. I might witness to yours. The body of Christ working together is the most unstoppable force in the universe. And I declare that the devil cannot have our loved ones. That people will step up and start getting involved in the ministry that they're called to do. They'll start filling in the gaps. And and that the, the church of the living God, the gates of hell, will not prevail against it. Anybody agree that with me in this place? Let's pray together. For this first group, I want to pray for you just that God would reveal himself to you and that you would know him in a real way. Heavenly Father, we come before you with honesty and openness. We, we know that we, we have sinned against you, that we're sinners, and we need your forgiveness. And God, those that acknowledge that they don't really know you, they don't really have a relationship with you, I pray right now as they pour out their heart to you, that they would receive you into their life and their life would never be the same. And Heavenly Father, I pray that as they repent of their sins, Lord, we, re- we confess that we're sinners, we ask you to forgive us, and we want to turn away from that. Let our next step be toward finding freedom in you into overcoming guilt and shame in our past. Let, let them see that not only are they saved just by their faith in you, but that they got a whole adventure, a whole life ahead of them that you've called them to, a purpose and a difference that they can make. And God, I pray that even these that are just giving their heart to you today, you would raise them up in your kingdom to be vessels of your ministry, of your glory, that we would be a light that shines in a dark world. And God, use us all, I pray. You use us to reach our neighbors who is somebody else's family member. Use us to reach our co-workers who is somebody else's loved one and friend. You use us to, to share the love of Jesus with everybody everywhere we go so that we make a difference, we make a change in this world. And God, I pray there'd be more news reports found of the church helping people, healing people, saving people, instead of people shooting one another, but us sharing the gospel, that that would, that would override all the, the works of the devil that he's trying to do in this world, that the works of the church would be greater, and that you would receive glory, and that this world would be changed by the power of Jesus Christ. And all who would agree with that, all who would be a part of that, would say amen and amen. Would somebody give God praise for who he is and what he's called us to do? Amen, amen. Praise God. I, I just believe this, this vision that God's called us to, if we'll, if we'll just do our part, God always does above and beyond what we could think or imagine.